Hey you guys, so today I'll be showing you how to achieve this new look that Tiny has been wearing. I have been dying to try it. And let me tell you about this color. I had the hardest time getting this color because I tried to take the easy way out and it turned out it was a mess. But um, what you'll see me doing now is sewing the first bundle in, which was a 14 inch from my hair collection. I bleached it and let it live to like a honey blonde. Um, the first bundle that I install, I always I don't single weft on my first bundle, I always double weft. So right here you'll see me pinning the right side, well the, not the right side, the right end of the track to the um, mannequin head because I sew with my right hand, I think most people do, but I sew with my right hand so when I go from left to right it's hard for me to keep the track in place being that I can't hold the track on my left hand because it's not on the left. So um, you'll see me stitching it in at this point. Um, I'm sorry I didn't record myself installing the frontal onto the cap. I lost that footage and y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all the micro stitch that I did on this frontal was amazing. I wish I could have seen it, but I'm gonna record a new video um, with this wig I'm making this weekend. It's gonna be like that look that Regine has, the bob with the blue on one side and the black on the other side. It's gonna be hot, y'all gotta wait for that one. Um, so. What I do is I go from side to side um, sewing, not so much on the angle. I don't do it on the angle until I get to like the second row of tracks. Um, so what I do when I get to the end, I like to stop double wefting and I start to single weft. And my stitches are very, very, as you see, my stitches are very close together when I get to that corner because you want your track to be as flat as possible right there. It's, the further you go up, the flatter it needs to be because that's where you'll be able to see, like, basically, if you don't do it right, you'll be able to see the difference between the frontal and the tracks. And you don't want that to happen. You want it to be as seamless as possible. Mind you, I don't cut the tracks until I get all the way to the top, which is on the last bundle. So, you know, I'm an OG. Cause I don't even have to cut my tracks at the bottom. So as you see me stitching, I knot three times on the side where it's flat. And then after I fold it over, I take the thread around the needle three times and knot it and continue stitching very close together because the closer you stitch, the flatter it'll be. And you see that motion I'm doing with my thumb. I like to stick my thumb on the track as I sew because it makes it flat. So then once you finish with the right side, you'll go ahead and take the track back over to the left side. And as you can see, I'm holding the track as I go. You see it's much easier when you go from right to left than it is from left to right. But um, I'm gonna finish sewing up this bundle and I'll get back with you guys when I get to the second bundle. So as you can see, I have finished sewing in the first bundle and the first bundle of 14 inch did a lot of coverage on this wig for some odd reason. Usually I don't get very far, but of course my tracks are very close together. So now I'm starting to sew in the second bundle of 14 inch for my collection and I am still double wefting. When I say I don't single weft until I get I start curving my tracks, I don't single weft until I start curving my tracks, I mean it. So now I'm just stitching in, doing the same stitching motions. And you guys don't mind me. I was watching, um, what was I watching? Some show, um, that the Gucci Man and Kichi K.O.R. show. And it was funny to me. So you might catch me laughing or, you know, falling out then in this video laughing because, I mean, it was kind of funny when I was watching it. So, um, 
I am just stitching away, stitching, stitching, stitching. So in a few, I'll be starting to um, separate the track into one track because, of course, I'm going to have to fold it over at some point when I get to the end. And you just, it's just a repetitive thing. You just so single, you so uh, I'm tongue tied. I'm so sorry. You so um, double wefted until you get to the end on both sides, and then you see where I have single wefted it. And yeah, you make sure y'all got plenty of clips because I'm trying to tell you the hair from the frontal will be everywhere if you don't clip it away. And I'm taking the hair back over to the right hand side, and of course I'm gonna pin it up because I'm not left handed. Um. After that, I just was sewing. I mean, I made this wig at what time was it? Um, it was like nine o'clock. I didn't finish it till eleven. Oh, I was so tired, and then I had to get up the next morning and go to work. But do you see? Like, can you see how flat that is? Like how no flat and how straight that track is. Like, that's what you call consistency. Cause that's how the wig is the whole way up and down the wig. So I'm going to continue to sew this in until I get to the point of where I'm going to start covering the tracks and I'll be back. So I am finishing up sewing in the last 14 inch, which is the second bundle. Um, this hair is body wave. I actually blow dried it a little bit because, of course, I don't like sewing in wet hair. So um, these are two 14 inches from my collection. I actually bleached these. I let one lift for longer than the other so it can kind of blend a little better with the um, frontal that I have. Um... So I'm going to finish sewing up this side and you'll see that I'm double wefting right now. But of course, when you get to both ends that's connected to the frontal, you need to single weft so it can be as flat as possible. So let me tell y'all a story about the, getting this color right. Oh, my goodness. So I started off with three sixteen six thirteen bundles. So, you know, everybody knows that's that platinum color, that bright blonde. And... I had two 14s and one 12 inch. Mind you, I had no idea that when you buy hair that color, it's best to deposit like bright colors like on there, not something like black or brown or whatever the case may be because the ba whatever color the base is was going to show the most. So I put a brown rinse on the roots of this 613 hair. Tell me why my hair turned like a brownish red, like it was like a sienna, a sienna brown. Mind you, I was going for brown, so that wasn't good enough for me. So I dyed it. Lord, the hair turned great looking or something. So um, I was like, what on earth am I going to do? So I ended up just using two 14-inch, you know, regular natural brown bundles of Body Wave, and I bleached them. And then I ended up using the shortest bundle of 613 hair, which actually turned out the right color because that color was easier to achieve that I was trying to get, which you'll see in about two seconds because I'm about to sew it on. And you'll see that um, when I sewed my last bundle on, I do not double weft the last bundle at all. I single weft it. So there's that last bundle. You can, guys can kind of see how good that color came out because trust me, it was definitely not that color at first. It was definitely gray. And I was like, what in the world am I going to do with this hair? So you're going to see that I'm stitching, stitching, stitching. And it's, making a wig is very repetitive. <laughs> Do y'all see how hot, how I'm struggling without that pen? Do y'all see how that track just keep falling? I tried to make it stay on that clip. Like, I'm trying to tell you, those um, T-pins come in handy. Those clips come in handy. And you can just see that I was struggling. Okay?
and I'm gonna I didn't take a picture or record in you know a picture of um or a video of what you need to make this wig so I'll put all of that in the description box um so I'm getting to the end of this first well wait a minute what is that to this first um I guess you call it track going across the whole side of the wig and I'm just gonna fold it over so I'm folding it over and you see I take the needle through the end of every track that I sew in if it's coming toward if it's going to be at the end right before I fold it over I take the needle through it because you don't want to take the needle under the track because all the rest of my stitches go under the track none of them go through the needle except for the ones that are on the end you don't want to make your needle go under the track on the end because you can pull your track too hard or be a little rough with it and that whole track will just come loose from from that end and you'll have it sticking out and that's not good so at this point i'm going to finish sewing up this last bundle until you get to the point of um having to cut and you can see that it's going on the angle you see how high it is on the end and how far down it is in the middle that's how you should sew in. It should be high up on the sides and low at the bottom. So once I get finished sewing to the point where I'll be cutting, I'll be back. So as you can see, I'm done the folding process and I'm now cutting the track. I'm going to start stitching it on the left hand side over top of the part that I just folded. So um, this is the second to last track that I'll be sewing in before I'll be done making this a bomb ass wig. Okay. So um, after I finish stitching this track, I'll show you guys how far you need to take the last track down on like across the top of the wig because if you don't take it down far enough, it won't cover some of the folded tracks that you may have not sewed down good enough. So after I finish sewing this last track, I'll be back to show you how far you need to take your track down. So I have sewed on that second to last track. Now what you're going to do is you see that finger motion of how far you need to take it over. You can take it down as far as you want to. Me personally, I don't take my track all the way down to the bottom of my wig because it kind of defeats the purpose of curving your tracks. Because if you sew that track on, then you're going to have all your tracks going back to the back again. So I take it from that last track that I curved at the top and stitch across over top of that and after you finish sewing in this last track you'll have a flawless wig to wear honey okay and you'll be slaying just like tiny
So at this point, I have finished sewing in that track and I'm now cutting it. Make sure you knot that very well because if you don't, it'll tend to come loose. And now I'm just brushing out the wig, getting it all cute and dandy for you guys. Of course, I don't have um, the installation on this wig in this video. So if you want that, just comment in the description box. So right now I am cutting the excess wig cap off and if you see that lipstick on the wig, I use that to mark where my um, frontal needs to be sewn at. Of course, you guys didn't see that part because I lost the footage. So if you want a video of me installing, sewing the actual frontal onto the cap, just let me know. So I'm just, look at those lashes, honey. Okay, lashes on fleek. But I have cut all of that excess cap off. Make sure you don't cut too close to the cap. Because that'll just ruin everything and the whole wig will fall apart. But did y'all see that stitch game though? The stitching girl honey now this is my um one of my 613 frontals mind you i have not plucked the thing off of this wig so my frontals come pre-plucked of course you can customize them a little more but they come pre-plucked <laughs> So now I'm going to show you guys how I styled the wig. Of course, I told you guys I missed the installation part. Some, something was going on with my phone. I think my sister called me or something while I was making this video. Somebody called me and the video just stopped and it was just a mess. So now I'm going to show you guys how I styled it. I, I'm using my one and only, I think it's the one inch flat iron. Um, I get these from Sally's. These are my favorite flat irons. They're only like $60 and I love them. I have two pair, one at home and one at work. Um, so I go through and straighten the top of my wig. Um, on, did I do both sides? I think I just did one side. But I like to straighten the hair out before I actually start curling it because that's how you get the best outcome. You can't expect your hair to look good and you haven't even pressed it out goodly. So, ooh, bomb. Hair on fleek. What? Okay. <laughs>
So I'll be adding in my finishing touches, a little edge control. Thank you guys for watching. Comment and subscribe. Let me know what you would like for me to do. And I'll see you guys next time.